Hello and welcome to another video of Elevate Maths. Today we're going to be doing a Pearson Excel Functional Skills uh, Level 1 Maths paper and non-calculator paper, uh, practice paper rather, for September 2019. Right, so if we just start with the first question, straight away. Um, right, let's see what the question says. So it's always a good idea to read the questions carefully, even though they look easy, but it's easy to make mistakes with functional skills exam papers. So always underline the keywords and the information required and understand what do they want? What does the examiner want from you in terms of the answer they're looking for? Right, so let's read the question. Here it says, Jack is keeping a record of the number of steps he takes each day. Monday, he takes 8,565 steps. This is the number of steps for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Now here it says, work out the range of the number of steps. So, range, as we already should know, it's basically the highest value take away the lowest value so in this case what's the highest value it's obviously wednesday which is 15323 and the lowest value is the one with the least thousands is monday so basically i'm doing wednesday take away monday so Let's do subtraction. So that's 15,323. I have to align the numbers in terms of their place values. That's 8,000 underneath the 5,000. Okay, 565. And therefore, I start subtracting the two numbers. So let's start. With that so obviously the bigger number on top and the smaller number in the bottom right and then when we're subtracting we start from right to left yeah i know nowadays everybody's dependent on a calculator but with non calculator unfortunately you will be asked to subtract multiply add and divide manually okay so you have to be prepared for that so now let's look at this subtraction question <clears throat> excuse me three take away five i can't do that yet because the three is less than the five two take away six that's not possible three take away five that's not possible either and five take away eight that's not possible either so the solution here is so first let's look at mr three so three take away five i can't do that so we have to take one from the two so the two becomes one and it gives one to the three yeah and the three forms with the one a new number called 13. now let's do 13 take away five can i do that yes we can that gives us eight okay now let's start with this we have to you know subtract each number from the other so we move on to the next number one take away six one is less than six, I can't do that. So one has to do the same thing. They have to take one from the three. The three becomes two, and it gives one to this guy. So the one and the previous one, they form a new number. Yeah, we don't add it to the other number, we just put it next to it, and they form a new number called 11. So 11 take away six, obviously 11 is bigger than six. That's basically just five there. Now let's do two take away five, can I do that? No, it can't because 2 is smaller than 5. So therefore, we take 1 from the 5. The 5 becomes 4. And I put 1 next to the 2. They form a new number called 12. 12 take away 5. That gives you 7. Good. Now, 4 take away 8. Can I do that? No, I can't do that. So I take 1 from the 1. It's got nothing left there. That's fine. And I give the 1 to Mr. 4. And they form a new number. The one and the four called 14. Now 14 take away 8, that gives you 6, and the 0, you just ignore that 0. So therefore, 
your answer is 6,758. Okay, that's your answer. Now, now here in all, in most of level one questions, they always ask probably two or three questions to show a check of your answer. So to show a check of your answer means to do the opposite that you've done here. So here the operation was subtraction, so you do the opposite, which is addition. So basically all you're doing is 8,565 plus 6,758 to see if that will give you 15,323. So let's do that. 5 plus 8 is 13. So you put the 3, carry the 1. 1 plus 6 is 7, plus 5 is 12. You put the 2, then you carry the 1. 1 plus 5 is 6, plus the 7 is 13. You put the 3, you carry the, the 1. 1 plus 8 is 9, plus 6 is 15. That gives you 15,323. So our check is successful and it completes. And you get full marks. You get two marks for that question and then one mark just for the check. Now let's move on to question number two. So question number two here says, okay, work out a quarter of 24. Now, what's a quarter of 24? So in maths, off means times. Okay, and that's 24. So it's basically a quarter times 24. When we multiply, we multiply the numerator with the whole number, or the amount rather. Yeah, so therefore, that gives you 1 times 24 gives you 24. And then 24 divided by 4 gives you 6. Therefore, the answer is 6. Yeah? Now, there's another way as well uh, to answer that. So if you get any other question similar to that, or even this question, let's just do the other way. So the other way is, um, basically there's a rule. So that's the amount. So it's usually the amount, yeah, or the number, yeah, divide by what? By the denominator. Yeah, and our denominator in this case, it's that, it's the 4, yeah? So denominator is always the, the, the bottom number in the fraction. Now, then you get a result or an answer, basically. All right, now, what do you do with the answer or the result? So the result... I times it by the numerator. Yeah, and that will give you the answer you're looking for. Now, just use this for any fraction of something, and then you'll get that. Yeah, you may not need to use the result times numerator in this case. Yeah, because our numerator is just one. Yeah, so whatever the result is. It will not change when you multiply by the numerator. But imagine if the numerator was 2 or 3 and so on. Obviously, it will change. So it's just a good habit just to do that. So let's just follow this method as well. So that is what? 24 divided by 4. That gives you 6. The 6, you times it by the numerator, which is 1. That will still give you a 6. Okay? So it's that method or this method. It's up to you. Excellent. And that's your one mark there. Now, let's look at this question now. Now, this question says work out minus 5 plus 3. Minus 5 plus 3. Now, it's always good to have a number line in this case. Okay. Now, this is our 0. S minus 5. Yeah, and then here you have minus 4. You have minus 3. 
the minus two, minus one, one, two, three, and so on. Yeah, let's say four, and then five. Now, always this number that is where you start. Okay. Oops. Now well, let's just what happened there. Mm, let's just get rid of that. Hopefully. Okay, excellent. So that's the start. Yeah, that's where you start from. Yeah. Oh yeah, we forgot this direction. That's the positive direction, and that's the negative direction. Uh, the number line it is endless anyway; it goes forever. Now, so this tells you, yeah, what direction you need to go to, yeah, and then the number that follows the sign, yeah, that tells you, for example, let's say the number of jumps, maybe or steps. Okay, or moves that you need to make. Now, so let's start with the uh, minus five with our starting point. So my starting point is minus five, and then I need to go towards the positive. So I need to go in that direction to the right. How many times? Three times or three jumps. That's one, two, three. Ah, so I end up in minus two. So therefore, my answer is minus two. There you go. Very easy. Yeah. So always just have a number line there for you. Ready? Yeah, it will just take a minute and that's it. Because these kind of questions, they're easy, but they're easy to make mistakes at the same time. Now, let's look at this question. So here it says, write 6.384, correct to one decimal place correct one decimal place. So all they want is a number after the decimal point. Okay. So, so if they want it correct to one decimal place, so they, they just want six point a number and they don't want those two extra numbers. So therefore what you need to do, you need to draw a line to the right of the one decimal place to the right of one decimal place. That's the decider line. We call it. Yeah. And that number that's on the right of the line that we call it the decider number. Okay, that's the decider number. Now, now you ask yourself a question. Yeah. Is this number five? And above, so five plus five, basically six, seven, eight, or nine, is it? The answer obviously it's yes because it's eight. Yeah. Okay. So then what you need to do, you need to add one, yeah, to the number. where on the left of the line okay so you need to add one there or you need to add one to the one decimal place number so therefore the answer you will get here would be six point four six point four and after that all the numbers after that red line you just ignore them they just tend to zeros basically yeah so you'll have six point four zero zero yeah but you ignore them because they want it correct to one decimal place so therefore your final answer is six point four and that's it what if that number eight was a four, a three, a two, a one? Yeah, all you need to do is you just write 6.3 and you just delete those two other numbers 
8 and 4, yeah? They tend to zeros, and the number stays as it is, the 3. You don't add, you don't round it up, basically, so it's, it remains the same. Right, so that was question number two. Now we move on to question number three. Okay, sorry if I'm taking too long today, but I'm just trying to give you the answers as well as explaining the um, underlying methods and uh, the thinking behind it so you find it easier to answer next time that you attempt to answer it. Um, right. So it's basically answering the exam papers for you or with you, as well as giving a lesson at the same time. Yeah, that's for your own benefit anyway. Anyway, enough of me. Let's get back to the questions. Now, question number three says, Alan works at a warehouse in Runcorn. A furniture company needs deliveries from Runcorn to Liverpool and Runcorn to Nantwich. Alan needs to work out the total delivery charge for these deliveries, he uses this map. So here's a map, and then here you have a scale. The scale it says one centimeter on the map is 10 kilometers on the ground. So it says run corn to Liverpool. So we need, we, we need to link run corn to Liverpool. And then obviously you get your ruler and you measure with your ruler, how long is that? Yeah, I've measured it earlier on, and that gives you 2.5 centimeters on paper. Yeah, and then you measure from Runcorn to Nantwich. Yeah, you just make a straight line. Yeah, and I've measured it earlier on, and that gives you 4 centimeters there. Now, now here it says, it says well. The scale is one centimeter on the map is 10 kilometers on the ground, yeah? Right, so obviously we need to find out what does 2.5 centimeters and four centimeters are in terms of kilometers. Now, all right, before we do that, let's look at this. So Alan uses these delivery charges. So these are the delivery charges uh, they use. Okay, so less than 20 kilometers, that's 9.99. 20 kilometers, 35 kilometers, that's 14 pounds 99. Over 35 kilometers, that's 24 pounds or 49 pence. So here's a question is, uh, says, work out the total delivery charge and show how you get your answer, okay? Now, so before we do that, first we need to do the conversion of the distances. So let's look at Liverpool to Runcorn. So that was basically... 2.5 centimeters. I need to convert that into kilometers. Yeah, so obviously 2.5 times 10 kilometers because one centimeter is 10 kilometers. Obviously, here we're not using calculators. So what are we doing? We are multiplying a decimal number with 10. Yeah. So remember, when we multiply with 10, 100, or a thousand. We move the decimal point to the right, depending on the number of zeros we have. Here we only have one zero, so we move the decimal point only once to the right, and it ends up there. So the number becomes 25, and that's 25 kilometers. Okay, there. Number two, so let's work out four centimeters. So four centimeters times 10. Here there is no decimal point. So all you need to do is says four times ten, that's just basically forty, and that's kilometers. Excellent. So now he had to do two deliveries, so we need to work out the total delivery charge. So basically, how much did the first delivery cost, and how much did the second delivery cost? Add them together. So first delivery, the distance was twenty-five kilometers. So let's look at here. So 25 kilometers obviously falls in this category. So the first delivery cost was 14 pounds and 99 pence. Yeah, let's just move this up a little bit. Okay, so the first one was 14 pounds and 99 pence. Second delivery was 40 kilometers. 
40 kilometers is over 35 kilometers and the cost was 24 pounds and 49 pence okay and then i just add up those two costs and here it says let's do that nine plus nine is 18 so i put the eight down carry the one one plus nine is ten plus four is fourteen four carry the one let's put the decimal point between the numbers here one plus four plus four that's nine one plus two is three therefore the cost is total cost is 39 pounds and 48 pence okay and 48 pence and that's your answer and you get four marks for that amazing so that was question number three now let's look at question number four question number four now question number four says john works monday to friday he buys his lunch on his way to work each day, John buys a sandwich, a bottle of water, and a bag of crisps. So here, these are the costs or the you know, or the price list for shop A, and here's the price list or the deal that uh, there is in uh, shop B, or shop B has. Now John thinks he will save more than seven pounds fifty a week if he buys his lunch each day from shop B instead of shop A. Is he correct? Is John is is John correct? And then here it says in bold, you must show your work in there. Yeah? So we don't the examiner doesn't just want the answer, yeah. You have to show the steps that led to the answer, yeah. Otherwise you won't get all the marks. You might just get one mark and that's it. Now let's look at shop B. So let's look at actually what he buys. So each day he buys a sandwich, a bottle of water and a bag of crisps three items yeah so in shop b three pound meal deal sandwich water crisps yeah that's just straight up shop b is three pounds excellent now let's look at shop a shop a is what two pounds 85 for any sandwich yeah and then 60 pence yeah so when you when you're adding them up yeah this says 60 pence so you have to convert the 60 pence into a pounds for about yeah so that would be 0 0.60 like so yeah so when you're writing it down you have to write it down like this so you add up correctly don't say 60 plus 2 that gives you 62 don't treat 60 pence as 60 pounds yeah so be careful of that be aware of that yeah so obviously how did we convert 60p into that format i know there is 100 pence in a pound so all you need to do is the 60 pence divide by 100 obviously you move the decimal point to the left two times once twice it ends up there that'll give you 0 0.6 and that'll be 0 0.60 uh, and then you put a pound sign and that's basically 60 pence yeah so just remember that now 85p we do the same thing yeah so in that format is 0 0.8 five okay and then you line it up like so now i can add up those uh, three prices yeah five plus zero plus five that gives you ten you put the zero you carry over the one plus eight is nine nine plus six is fifteen fifteen plus eight is twenty three so you write down the three you carry the two yeah, before you do that, you put the decimal point there. 2 plus 2 is 4, plus 0 plus 0 is still 4. So, and that would be £4.30 for shop A. For shop A. Now, now, what we need to do, we need to work out the difference yeah, in terms of the cost between the two shops. 
and the difference is like so four pounds thirty take away three pounds and that will give you one pounds thirty okay one pound thirty and that's the difference what actually that's the difference per day that's the difference per day okay now how many days a week yeah so he, obviously he goes to work Monday to Friday yeah so that's basically five days okay so therefore what you need to do you need to do five times one pounds 30 yeah and that would give you six pounds 50 so what did John say here what was his statement he said John thinks he will save more than seven pounds fifty a week if he buys his lunch each day from shop B instead of shop A. Now, in actual fact, he saves six pounds fifty five six pounds fifty pence. So therefore, is John correct? No, he's not correct. And we've shown the steps, yeah, in order for us to reach that final conclusion. And that's the fourth question in this test. And that way we get 14 marks out of 14 because we've answered all the questions correctly. Yeah. And I hope you all get full marks in your next exam. Excellent. So that's all for this time. Uh, thank you for listening. And I will see you next time in the next video. Thank you. Bye-bye.